Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. A potential title decider took centre stage in La Liga, as Ronald Koeman's Barcelona hosted Diego Simeone's Atleti at the new Camp. A recent resurgence from Barcelona, aided by a cataclysmic collapse from Atletico Madrid, meant that a Barca win would see them move ahead of Atleti with just three games to go. But in the end, the match finished nil all, meaning Real Madrid might be back in the ascendancy. The XG showed that each side had their chances, 0.85 to 0.69, with the XG time map backing up how close of an encounter it was. But what tactics did both managers use? Let's take a look. Here's how Kerman and Simeone lined up courtesy of the wonderful OneFootball app. As you know by now, OneFootball is our long-term sponsor and it is the best football app around, giving you stats, match updates, transfer news and so much more, absolutely free through the link in the description below. Let's begin with Simeone's side as they made some interesting adaptations. For the most part, from the goal kick, Barca weren't always looking to press high, with Oblak only attempting 9 long balls throughout the 90, so he was usually able to find one of the centre-backs. But Barca could press higher up when needed, with the wing-backs picking up their opposite numbers and the midfield going man-to-man, -man, leaving Griezmann and Messi to press the three centre-backs. When Atleti used a midfield two, with Llorente having pushed into the front line, Barca would have a spare man in the midfield, who could then push up to press the spare centre-back. And crucially, Barca's backline could back up the press as Atleti's front line aren't the quickest, so they were less wary of the ball over the top. And Barca's press was effective at times, ending with a passes per defensive action of just over 8. But let's focus on what Atleti did down the left, as they were particularly effective. When Llorente was deeper in midfield, making it a 3 vs 3, a Barcelona midfielder would be much less likely to push out and press Atleti's third centre-back, so they had a 3 vs 2 advantage deep. And Messi was often the right side attacker, and his defensive work rate is questionable at times, so Atleti looked to take advantage of this through their left centre-back Hermoso in a few different ways. When the ball was already central, or down the left, Hermoso could push into the left-back slot early on, as we can see in the average positions. This would then allow Carrasco to push even higher up the pitch, and it would enable them to have a 2 vs 1 against Dest. If a Barcelona midfielder came across to assist, Saul was also a crucial cog as he was often happy to move wide as well to create a 3 vs 2. So this triangle here served to release Carrasco as he could now hug the touchline, but knowing that men were providing the width, he could also move infield into the half space to get on the ball. But we could also see Hermoso invert into the midfield particularly when the ball was on the right and the rest of the midfield had moved across to support. So, he would often be able to receive the ball and be the link to Carrasco on the left-hand side, who could then have a 1 vs 1 and take on his man. This meant that Carrasco had the most completed dribbles in this match. We see this in one of the biggest chances of the game. The ball is on the right and Hermoso has inverted into midfield behind Messi. As discussed, Saul is willing to move wide to allow Carrasco infield, so Saul receives the switch. Carrasco then moves wide and Messi doesn't track Hermoso, who can make the run into the space created. A brilliant block stops Correa from scoring. But what did Barcelona do? Barca were also generally able to find their centre-backs in the first phase, with Ter Stegen only going long six times. And Barca looked to push both wing-backs up high and wide early on to provide the width, whilst Atleti initially pressed in a front three in a 5-2-3 to go man-to-man -man with the centre-backs. However, this gave Barcelona an easy advantage in the midfield, and Pedri would often receive higher up in this half-space. So soon, Atleti shifted to more of a 5-3-2 instead. But Barca also used their right-hand side effectively. 
With the Atleti midfield shifting across to deal with the threat of Pedri in the half space, Dest would look to pin Carrasco deep early on. This left space in the midfield that Messi would drop into down the right, aided by Dest taking the wing back deeper. But if opponents paid too much attention to Messi deep, Dest would then be able to make the run in behind. However, for the most part it allowed Messi to receive the ball in these positions, as we can see in his touch map. Soon, Atleti shifted to more of a 5-4-1 to deal with this, with Correa dropping into the midfield and allowing Saul to move much wider down the left to cover Messi. But Messi is Messi, so he was still able to fashion a big chance. As you can see, Atleti has shifted to the 5-4-1 to cover Messi and Pedri in the wider spaces. Messi receives and Saul now wider can close him down immediately with Des being higher. But Messi drifts past Llorente and several more men and gets off a great shot that is only stopped by Oblak. It is a beautiful passage of play with the best outfield player and the best shot stopper in the world bringing out the best in each other. Lastly, with the ball down the right, we would often see Atleti's defence shift across to cover. And Griezmann, rather than being in the middle of the three centre-backs, took up the space between the wider centre-back and Trippier well, forcing Trippier to come much more narrow and giving Alba much more space. On a few occasions, Barca were then able to switch the ball to Alba to get the cross in. Overall, neither side would be happy with the draw but Atleti will hope that Sevilla can do them a favour later on. But guys, I have some big questions for you to answer down below. I'd love for you to rate Coleman's first season out of 10, and whether you think he should continue into the next season. Secondly, do you think Simeone is still the right man to take Atleti forward? It may be a controversial question, but I want to know what you think down below. Leave a football emoji in your comment so I can search it more easily. And if you want even more content, whilst helping to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash footballmadesimple. You'll get early access to videos, exclusive videos, as well as access to the upcoming FMS video podcast. And a big big thanks to Joshua Savinsky for his support on the Patreon Ultra tier. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.